SpaceX, Starbase, Cape Canaveral. You've got the questions, we've got the answers. Thanks for tuning in to episode 78 of Lab Padre's Weekly Updates. Now let's dig in. Starting off this week in the early hours of Friday morning, the upper section of a new E-Dome test tank was moved into High Bay for stacking. Later that morning, that same test tank section was lifted and stacked onto the lower section in High Bay, likely completing stacking for this article. More than a week after the demise of Tent 2, the demolition of Tent 1 finally began as excavators began tearing down the former fabrication facility to make way for the expansion of Star Factory. Saturday afternoon saw more progress on the new mega bay as another prefabrication section of the stairs was lifted for installation in one of the building's front corners. Saturday night, crews were back to work preparing for the much anticipated toppling of mid bay, weakening the building by removing many of the steel supports on its lower section. Meanwhile, the E-Dome test tank was rolled out of the ring yard with the whole move now easily visible from Sentinel Cam thanks to the removal of Tent 1. Back over at Mid Bay, workers began cutting through the main support columns on the High Bay side of the building as preparations for the destruction of the building approached the final stages. Next, with the columns cut, a steel cable attached to the front two columns was pulled by an excavator, bending the columns out of the way from the building. Finally, the moment had arrived. An excavator pulled on the columns on the far side of mid-bay, causing the entire building to drop before toppling over onto the footprint of Tent 1. Sunday morning, crews worked both extending and painting new black wooden fences that had been going up along the Highway 4 side of the build site. That afternoon, excavators were seen making quick work of the remains of Mid Bay as crews removed the debris to make room for Star Factory construction to move into the area. On Monday, four new heat exchangers arrived at the orbital tank farm. While not confirmed, it seems likely that these kettle boilers may have been borrowed from Florida Starship infrastructure. Shortly after their arrival at the launch site, crews began working installing them onto the empty pedestals on the liquid oxygen side of the orbital tank farm. The long-awaited addition of more heat exchangers and pumps to the tank farm should allow for more quick loading of propellant once completed. Back at the build site on Monday afternoon, the LR-11000 crawler crane was spotted lifting yet another stair section for installation in the new mega bay. A short time later, the fourth and final girder for the new mega bay 2's bridge cranes arrived and was placed with the others to await installation. At the same time, Booster 12's methane tank was lifted in Mega Bay and stacked onto the waiting liquid oxygen tank, completing stacking operations on another Super Heavy. On Tuesday evening, crews were spotted on a man lift near Ship 25's nose cone, placing SpaceX logos, as well as two matching S25 label decals on the nearly flight ready vehicle. Back down at the launch site, one of SpaceX's telescopic boom cranes was spotted removing one of the booster's alignment pins from the top of the orbital launch mount. Later, that second pin was also removed. The removal of these pins indicates that Booster 9 is only planned to leave the mount under its own power. On Wednesday morning in the ring yard, the payload bay door was installed onto the Ship 32 payload section as SpaceX continues to push forward with vehicle production. Over at the new mega bay, the next internal stair section was lifted and then lowered into place in the front left corner of the building, being carefully threaded in from the top down. Around the same time, a fourth pump was installed on the methane side of the orbital tank farm as crews continue to increase the farm's capability. Back at the build site, once again, Ship 31's nose cone was moved to the high bay door as SpaceX prepares to begin stacking operations on yet another Starship. Down at the Massey's test site, a crane picked up half of the site's open-ended tent and moved it into a new location at the developing facility. Meanwhile, back at the new mega bay, the stairs that were just lowered into place were lifted back out and lowered to the ground after possible fitting issues. 
By early afternoon, preparations seemed complete in the high bay as the Ship 31 nose cone section was rolled into the building to begin the stacking process. A short time later, another excavator was delivered to the build site and immediately headed into the construction area recently vacated by Mid-Bay and Tents 1 and 2. That evening, Ship 31's payload bay section was moved across the build site to the high bay where it joined the nose cone section ahead of stacking operations. Overnight Wednesday into Thursday, the nose cone was lifted, attached to the payload section, and then they were tandem lifted to the turntable to be welded together. A few hours later, one of the new structures from the Sanchez site, suspected of being an adjustable floor and raptor lift, was moved to Mega Bay. Later that morning, a relatively small prefabricated section of the top level of the new Mega Bay was lifted and installed on the left corner of the back wall. A bit later, a second prefabricated section was also lifted and installed, this one onto the left wall, completing the outside columns that make up that corner. Meanwhile, back on the ground, one of the new white stands from the Sanchez site, now believed to be a booster engine installation stand, followed its elevator floor piece into Mega Bay. Mauricio with RGV Aerial Photography flew over Starbase again this Wednesday, bringing up some more great overhead shots. In this photo, we can see that there is once again activity near the suborbital tank farm. While this area has been graded for some time, up until recent weeks, it had been used mainly as a storage yard. Now, however, all of the storage has been moved elsewhere, and crews are busy putting up framework for concrete walls around the area. Will this become the home of the seemingly mythical Test Stand C? Or does SpaceX have another plan for the area? Drop us your thoughts below. This aerial shot of the orbital tank farm allows us to better visualize what this farm will look like with its soon-to-be increased capability. The addition of the six new HIPPO heat exchangers, as well as additional pumps, with one still to come on the liquid oxygen side, it will be nice to see all the empty infrastructure spaces finally filled in. With the addition of more horizontal hot dog tanks on the former landing pad coming in the near future, the orbital launch farm area will look very different than it did just one year ago. Over at Cape Canaveral early Saturday morning, new Falcon 9 booster 1081 lit up the Florida skies, sending the four members of NASA Crew-7 mission on their way to the International Space Station. Minutes later, three of the booster's Merlin engines fired back to life as the rocket performed its landing burn and touched down at SpaceX's Landing Zone 1. That same night, a Falcon 9 took off from Florida for the second time that day as Booster 1080 launched its third mission delivering 22 more Starlinks to orbit. On Monday, Tug Crosby Skipper towed a short fall of Gravitas out to sea in preparation for booster recovery operations for the upcoming Starlink Group 6-13 mission. Just over an hour later, Doug returned to Port Canaveral with both of the fairing halves from the Starlink Group 6-11 launch a day and a half before. The next morning, after less than 24 hours in port, Doug headed back out to sea once again, this time for fair and recovery of the Starlink Group 6-13 launch. On Thursday morning, Signet Titan towed Just Read the Instructions back into Port Canaveral with Falcon 9 Booster 1080 following its launch of the Starlink Group 6-11 mission. Just hours later, the booster was lifted off the deck of the drone ship and transferred to dockside stand for processing. As it was being placed on the dock, booster 1077 turned the Florida night into day as it launched yet another batch of Starlink satellites on their way to low Earth orbit. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out!